Hi everyone, how are you doing? Uh, today I'm going to show you how the one-to-one -one relationship models in web APIs work in ASP.NET Core. We are firstly going to create the models and then we'll handle the methods in order to perform all of the CRUD operations with them. I would highly recommend you to watch my previous video for CRUD operations in web APIs in case you are not familiar with them, but otherwise I suggest you just keep on watching. So I'm just going to open the previous project that I did for the CRUD operations in web APIs. And as I said, and there I'm just going to add the one-to-one -one relationship model to it. So I'll wait for it to load. And here you can see that we have created the uh, users controller with the methods there. And we have added services to a service to our project and here is the here are the methods of the service if we go to the models we have only one model the user model with all of these properties and here i'm going to add uh, an other model for the one-to-one -one relationship uh, and i'm going to name it uh, the username model so that the you uh, so that the user has just one username and the username is only related to one user. So this is the one-to-one -one relationship uh, as an example. And to this username model, uh, I'm just gonna need an int ID property. And I have like a, a name property for it. Just these two properties. Okay, I'm just going to make the name property as nullable. So it could be null, but um, then otherwise I'm going to need to uh, connect this to the user model. So I'm going to need the user ID in property. And then I'm going to need uh, a user property. I'm naming it user. And here on top, we're going to need to specify also the data annotations that say that that actually that specified the foreign key to be the user ID. So here, if we go to the users model, we're also going to connect the user model to the username model. We're going to need an, a username ID int property and also a username property which I'm also going to name username and we'll, uh, we'll make this both of these nullable so that when we create the new user maybe we don't need to specify it right away so it could be null and what is left to do uh, each time when we create a model we need to add this to add the migrations to the database. So I'm just giving it a name so that we know why we did the migration, like a one to one, because we added a one to one relationship model. Okay, so uh, the migration was added, so we just need to update the database. Okay, it seems fine. What you're going to need to do now is, uh, if you remember from a previous video, when we uh, wrote this user DTO class here, we're also going to need another class in order so that we can uh, specify a way to show the data now that we have also a username property to the user. So I'm just selecting a name for this user DT uh, username DTO data. So the idea is that the user will be shown with the username as well. Okay, so user, username, DTO. I know this is a horrible name, but nothing better was coming to my mind at the moment. Okay, so in this, uh, in the user DTO model, we want to add the uh, user ID property so that each time when we create the user we also specify the user id ok 
Okay, I'm just gonna copy what we had in the user DTO and here now, I'm just gonna add the string property so that we just show the name of the username for the user. So we don't need the username ID, we can just show just some specific data, which is actually the purpose of the DTO, so that we show only the data that we want. And this username property, I think, needs to be nullable because that's how we specified it before. Okay, so if we go to the user service, uh, where we edit our methods for the crowd operations, we see that uh, in order to display the data as uh, a user DTO, we wrote this user to DTO function. And to it, we're gonna need to add this, uh, this username ID that we create, with, that we added to the users model. Okay, this was just my bad. This was username ID, not user ID. Uh, in the user DTO uh, class. And back to this here, uh, we're gonna need to have a username ID in this user to DTO function. So we need to specify there. We need to take from the user the username ID as well. There's an error, maybe we haven't specified the username ID property somewhere as nullable. Okay, so this here needs to be nullable because in the user we specified it. As we see here in the user model, we specified it as nullable and we need to do the same thing in the user DTO. So just make a question mark there to make it nullable. We'll go back to the user service for our, uh, for our methods. Here in the first add method, we just need to, when we create the user here, we need to uh, take from the user DTO the username ID as well. So username ID equals user DTO dot username ID. And the first method, the add method has to be okay. We don't make, need to make many uh, changes there. The delete method, we don't need to make any changes at all. So here we want to show uh, the data as user DTO because uh, they don't have this one-to-one -one relationship type. We're gonna need to show them as user uh, with the username DTO that we created. And here we can write this method uh, in the context that users that select. Here we're gonna create a new username, uh, user UN DTO, which was the DTO with the username included. Here we are gonna need to make a few changes. Okay, so we will store this in a user variable. And down there, we're going to return this user variable. And inside here, we're going to create the user UN DTO, where we're going to take from the users from the context, we're going to take the user's first name and uh, assign it to the first name of this user UN DTO model we're going to do the same thing for the last name from the for the age for the personal number and in the last step we need to do the same thing for the uh, string username that we created and we're going to need to select your username username equals you that you that username dot name so the name of the username model so the get all method is fine we see here a red underline error because the return type of this method is user dto not user un dto we're going to need to change that here 
We're also going to change the iUsage service interface in the interface. The return type has to be user UN detail because we are returning a user with the username. Also, uh, we're going to need to change this here in the controller as well. In the get users method where we use this get all method that we had in the service. Okay, the get all method is fine. And we can do the something similar here in the get by ID method. We are going to need to change just a few things. First of all, uh, here we need to add the where clause where uh, we select just one specific user from the context, the user where the uh, ID is equal to the ID that we take in the parameter. Okay, so what we need to change here as well is to make it that first or default async. So we're just gonna return one user from the context. Uh, or we will just create one user from all this thing here. And the return type has to be also user UN DTO. And we'll change this in the interface and in the controller. So here in the get by ID uh, method signature here, just tab. And in the users controller in the get user method. We go to the update method we only need to add something here for the user that uh, that username id so we will check we will update also the user uh, username id here okay user that username id equals user dto that username id we can just around the project now and we'll check if our methods work. Okay, if we go to the get users endpoint, here we can try try it out and execute and we'll see that I guess we have no users here. So we have this empty array. So, so uh, what we could do here is just, I'm just gonna see the name of the database here and we can just go to the uh, SQL server. So we can go to SQL server management studio and we can create a user we can create a username and we can connect this together so that they have a one-to-one -one relationship with each other and we can then see how this data appears in our uh, in our apis so just click on connect i'm opening here the databases and the name of my database was something like uh, crowd api data and open tables and here i'm going to go to the uh, users table dbo that users and click on edit top 200 rows okay so we can here create a user model with a first name a last name a name We'll uh, fill this data here and we'll connect it with a username ID of one, which we'll create later. Okay, so one user was created and it has an ID of two. We we'll can just go to the dbo.username to create a username and to connect it to this user with the ID of two. Okay, just let me put a name to the username and like. Yeah, John Davies and uh, the user ID would be one, would be two actually, which was the uh, user's ID, that the ID of the user that we created. Click enter. 
Okay, so username with the ID of one was created and just go and test our application. Okay, if we go here, we can try and uh, get the users. Firstly, so we have the first name, the last name, and we have also the username as a sh the name of the username. Uh, displayed, we can go to this get AP, get user, we imported there too, and we get the user that we imported. We can go and try to, uh, to post the user. We can click on try it out and here give a first name to it, a last name. And okay, we'll fill this data and there in the username ID, we'll just also connect it to the one username because we only had uh, created one username. Okay, we're going to go and try to uh, update the user. I don't really remember the date of the user, but we'll just update the second user, the user with the ID of two, and give it the username of one. And if we go and get the user with the ID of two, the data will be changed as we see here. I also try and delete actually the user with the ID of one. If we had the user with the ID of one, we actually had no user with the ID of one. Uh, I think the user with the name Max took another ID. If we, we could check this, when we created the user, we can see here in the response header that it had the ID of 30. And if we try to delete the user with the ID of 30, we have received no content here, but if we go and try to get all of the users, We're going to execute here and the second user will be deleted. So yes, that was pretty much it for this video. In the upcoming couple of videos, I'm also going to show you how this process works for the one-to-many and many-to-many relationships models. So thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon.